You wouldn't happen to have some time on your hands, would you, Clive? Only I was wondering if you might help me with something else. Don't tell me. Another unruly dominant. Not quite, but a dangerous foe nonetheless. It promises to be quite a hunt. Care to join me? Sure. All right. Tell me about our quarry. A fiendish, cold-blooded beast known as a Gifra. Normally, we leave such animals well alone, and for good reason. But I have an even better reason to want its tongue. Uh, its tongue? If you'll permit me, Tributary, I can explain. Certainly, Yamila. It's been over a week since my sister gave birth to her first child. Yet, she still isn't back on her feet. We've tried everything to restore her spirits. Physics and nostrums, the laying on of hands and of leeches, but all to no avail. The healers tell me there's only one hope left. A broth as potent as its ingredients are perilous to procure. It isn't only Yamila's sister who stands to benefit from this, by the way. There's her baby to think of, and Walias, too. She'd agreed to be his wet nurse, you see. I'd be glad to help. Thank you. Our hunters have no shortage of skill, but this task calls for more than that. And it won't be achieved through weight of numbers, either. The Giver is as wary a foe as it is a deadly one. Two hunters might catch it unawares, but any more than that, and it would pick up our scent a league away. Then it is decided. The two of you will go, while Jill and I occupy ourselves here. Perhaps we might help prepare the broth. That would be most kind of you. Come then, Clive. The river of time flows fast, and so must we. There's a giver that has claimed the ruins at the foot of the mountain as its hunting ground. But as I say, they are wary creatures. We'll need suitable bait to draw it out. The flesh of a forest ibex should suffice. To the forest, then. All right, let's see how this goes. There's nothing. A giver loves more than a fat haunch of ibex. That speaks the voice of experience. Do you hunt often? Since I was a girl, my father would take me. Then after he returned to the sea, Yamila's father. Our families have always been close. Even if her sister wasn't Walius's wet nurse, I couldn't stand by and watch her suffer. Yeah. These will do nicely. Thanks, Cal. God, these things are a lot more beefier than I remembered. It's totally unnecessary, but okay. Return to the sea, and to the clouds rise again. Have our bait then. What next? Next, we pay a visit to the dark gate to pick some local weed. It'll help disguise our scent. Gotta do a lot of preparations, huh?
There should be a sprig or two of local weed growing somewhere around here. Look for the golden leaves. Right here. <sighs> Is this it? Aye, that's the stuff. Crush the leaves between you. Uh, if you insist. Could have warned me about the smell. Like corruption, isn't it? We'll have an honor guard of flies before long. But it'll stop the Gavra from noticing us. Its nose will tell it we're nothing but a feast for worms. Oh, I feel so much better. We can wash it off afterwards. If there's one good thing about the Gavra choosing the ruins for its hunting ground, it's that there's plenty of fresh water nearby. Damn, we're in for a long one right here. Where should we lay the bait? Gavers are creatures of habit. Look for some sign of its passing. It's sure to return to the same place sooner or later. Marking his territory. Something was. A curl, maybe. Tracks. But I assume they're too small to belong to a Givra. You're right. They're barely big enough to belong to a Givra's breakfast. Fresh kill. But not a Givras. The wounds are too clean, too small. Let's see. Last area right here. Look like a predator's tracks. You can clearly make out the claws. And not just any claws. These belong to a Givra. There's no mistaking them. We lay the bait here. Let's hope our friend is hungry. Draw them out. Still no sign. Patience, Clive. Hunting's not something you can rush. Have you stalked these beasts before? Once. Gavers are fast, so the job called for a bearer. But even with my knack, it was a close run thing. Not many leaders would take such risks for their people. Says the man who battled an icon to save a boy he barely knew. It is the way of the moats of water to use what gifts we've been given for the good of all. And I gather it's your way too. It was Sit, the man whose name I bear. He fought for his people and their future with every fibre of his being. I'm just following in his footsteps. 
In many ways, you remind me of him. Me? You're confusing daring with desperation. Quiet. Something's coming. There it is. Our guest has finally arrived. Shall we greet him? It'd be rude not to. Stay locked onto him. There we go. Give him the damage. Now that's a lot of damage! this that should be it <laughs> yeah I killed right oh, when I blocked him wow <laughs> Exaggerating when you said they were dangerous. <laughs> They're forces of nature, all right. And with this one's passing, the river of life has calmed. Oh man. O oh, roaring torrent, son of storms, may your spirit run free in the open ocean. This flesh I claim, that your gifts might rain down upon us this day, and our river flow in spirit once more. Well then, let's return to the village. We must get this tongue to your miller before it spoils. I'll probably go do just one more cyclist and we'll call the stream. <laughs> Tributary, my lord. Did all proceed as planned? 
It did. Yeah. One giver tongue, as promised. Oh, thank you. I shall add it to the broth at once. By your leave, tributary. If there is anything else that we can do to help, you need only ask. No, no. You've already done more for my family than I can ever repay. Just as you have, Clive, for my family. I only regret that I have nothing to offer you in return but my gratitude. It's more than enough. Besides, I'm no less grateful to you. For what? For welcoming my friends and I into your midst. For showing us how your people live. For reminding me that the world we strive to create, where bearers can live alongside their fellow men in peace and comfort, is no mere fantasy. I'd hardly call it comfort. Every day is a struggle. Though we do at least struggle together, it's true. As must we all. I only ask that you remember the cost of using your gifts as a bearer. I know that you feel it's your duty to do whatever you can to help your people. But do you have a child to think about now? And Wallace has lost enough. I shall bear that in mind. That's all I ask. Oh, and if there is anything else that we can do to help, well, you know. Thank you. Truly. The last words. news I think I might have found a way to break to law's curse go on well after listening to the village elders and scouring every likely looking tom in the library I learned that not all tombries are the same little green menaces we know and loathe apparently a chosen few live to incredible ages and grow to many times the size of their counterparts. Uh oh. I think this is it. Tales hold that it's the very eldest of these, the Tombury Kings, who oh, weave gosh. the curses. Yep. And that their magics bind their victims to them, that they might continue to feed on their pain. So if we slay the one that cast the curse, the feeding will cease. But that was my thinking, yes. Though I doubt it'll be easy. These kings are not just bigger, they're stronger too. And if the tales are true, their followers will defend them to the death. It is a perilous proposition, in short. But it may also be to law's only hope. What say you? I'll do it. Even if killing this king doesn't break the curse, Isidia will be a safer place for its removal. Thank you. So then, where will I find it? That, alas, I do not know. It must have woven the curse at the altar in Father's Fell, but as to where it is now. Fanet, you were the one asking about Tonbury's, right? Tonbury's. <laughs> because there's a whole bloody army of them out on the cloak. Oh, gosh. I ain't fighting all of them by myself now. Why now? There's only one way to find out. I'll head up the mountain and see what's going on. Right. Thank you. And please, be careful. All right. Wonder how this is gonna go. <laughs> oh man. Let's 
So the Tom Berry Canes are massive. Oh gosh. I found her. They're almost at the gate. But they won't be coming any closer. Eat this! I don't know, just line them all up! I should buy Haven some time at least. Clive, you all right? Fine. We've taken care of the immediate threat. Thank the tides. I was worried I was going to lose you both. Till all he, oh, he took a sudden turn for the worse just after you left. What? Is he? No, he's hanging on. I fear the Tombury King may have begun the cursing ritual again. In earnest this time. And I can't imagine their being here as a coincidence. I think it might be happening on this very mountain. If it is, it won't be for long. Get back to Talor. I'm going up. My thanks. I shall pray for both of you. Let's do this. Oh god, it's a big area too. More of them. Come on then. I crave an audience with your king. So many of them. These things, man. Like, <laughs> shit. Now we're now we're on the verge of fighting the tall berry king. Make any noise too, but... so there must be something else. Already lined up for me, perfect. Still no sign of the king. Could find it have been wrong. Nope. I mean, with all these tomb berries, I'm pretty sure that's not a coincidence. Oh my god, why are there so many of them this time? Tide a wave. Oh, that's a lot of toll breeze. 
You got that right. Let's build this up. Gather around, people! Ah! Oh my god, that was close. Looks like that's the last of them. Out here, anyway. Oh, lo oh no. The beast men do like dark places. Oh no, I don't want to. I don't like to see the looks of that. <laughs> oh gosh. I think I see him in the distance. Well, I'll be damned. Is that him? Oh no. Oh my god! <laughs> Just look how big that guy is! <laughs> is it too late to turn back now, guys? Oh my gosh. Where'd he go? Oh shoot, he can teleport? Oh my god, he can summon them. Of course he can summon them. This is Tom Berry King. Alright, he staggered. Alright. Let's do this. Gotta get rid of those things first. All right. Oh my god, they're not flinching! Okay. I'm assuming if they touch you, you die! <laughs> Giga Flare. Q. 
Kill him! Where'd he go? Oh my gosh! Alright. Give me that! Oh shit, he hit me still. Come on, that should be it. Alright. Hit with the tsunami. Is that it? Yes! Woo! <sighs> it's done. Which means the curse should be broken. Let's see how Talor's doing. What's up right here? My gosh. The Tom Berry King is... <laughs> Something I do not... I wish... I never had to see again. <laughs> is it done then? It is. I was going to ask if there had been any change in Talor's condition, but judging by that smile on your face, I think I already know the answer. You do? Talor, he's back! Thank you, my lord. I can never repay you for everything you've done for me. I owe you my life. I'm just glad the curse is lifted. There is one thing I'd like to know, though, if you don't mind my asking. What made you seek the Tombury's help in the first place? Oh, that, well, uh, you deserve to know. It was years ago now, back in my trading days. The sons of Greek had arrested me in Oriflam, chained me up in a lightless cell with a great sword hung over my head, ready to fall if I didn't confess. Well, they never said to what. I didn't, of course. So eventually they just let me go. And I never told a soul. Tried to forget it ever happened. But then you came along and the sight of your sword brought it all flooding back. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't hardly breathe. And I, I thought that if I gave my old chain to the Tombries, maybe, maybe they could take all that pain away. All that anger. But it only made it worse. Oriflam has fallen. And the men who tortured you likely fell with it. <laughs> if only I'd known, I might have spared everyone a lot of trouble. I'd convinced myself that you were like them. That all outsiders were the same, but... You're not. Far from it. Thank you, son. Thank you. Yes. Clive, there's something I need to tell you. After we parted ways on the path to the cloak, I went straight back to Talor and explained to him what you were doing on his behalf. And just like that, his pain began to fade. What do you mean, just like that? 
The Tumbra King would have still been alive. I had to contend with dozens of his minions before I found him. Then perhaps one of them warned him of your coming and he broke off his ritual. Or perhaps perhaps knowing that an outsider was fighting for him was what lifted the weight from Talor's heart. I know from experience that many illnesses are not wholly physical but of the spirit at least in part was there ever really a curse then or was Talor simply suffering from the pain of his memories and the guilt of what he'd done for all the difference it makes I suppose we'll never know maybe not but this much I do know. It was your strength and your selflessness that healed his heart in the end. <laughs> I'll be sure to tell my healer friend when I get home. <laughs>